Thanks, Wendy. She's very brave inviting someone whose background is in the arts and behavioral sciences to come and speak to this distinguished group. I uh, wanted to talk with you about uh, why I'm very excited about this con conference and why I was eager to sponsor it. Um, one of the things we are hearing every day, and not just through the political hyperbole of the campaigns, that we have going on in all of our states. But we're hearing about the importance of energy-related issues. We're hearing about uh, it from various sectors. Obviously, our scientists and engineers and people out in the private sector developing products to address energy-related issues have been very much on the leading edge, if not the leading edge, of many of these issues. But what I'm seeing uh, from the educational sector, which I think is very exciting, is kind of an intersection of politics, economics, science, which you see on our Energy uh, Center, Energy Partnership website. But I'm also seeing, in addition to our technologists jumping on board, our social scientists, our artists wanting to uh, play a role, and even our humans, as well as our social scientists. We're interested in the behavioral aspects, the aesthetic aspects. The kinds of decisions and the unintended as well as the intended consequences of the kinds of development that many of you are engaged in right now. We're also very much aware of the development of alternative energy sources. I see it every day through the incredible work that our faculty and students are engaged in. You've got a chance to see a couple of posters, just two that represent a phenomenal array of work going on in chemistry and in other areas in arts and sciences, as well as in the College of Environment and Life Sciences, the Graduate School of Oceanography, and across our campus. I'm really excited about the improvements of electric vehicles, and that is obviously something that brings us together today, but I'm not alone in that. Uh, those of us who may be looking on the outside may be seen more as your customers uh, than your creators or partners in that are very interested in what's going on because I think we're going to see a sea change in transportation. Every time I go back to Europe, I'm reminded by different decisions that are being made in those countries and how the United States is now moving closer to uh, a global system where we're looking at more sustainability, uh, freedom from fossil fuels, and so forth. Uh, the development of new systems is one of the things that really engages a lot of our top scientists and engineers. And we're also looking at all of these innovations, what they mean in terms of energy policy. Clearly our political and our government leaders, as well as our business leaders, recognize that change is essential. But what does that mean in terms of government policies on things? new standards, uh, obviously our way of thinking, our way of operating. We were talking uh, this morning uh, with, uh, with the uh, poster session and uh, vendor session next door about how so many things are, are changing that relate to not only vehicle use, but safety and the ways we communicate, just the sound difference <coughs> between a fossil fuel operated vehicle and an electric vehicle, and what does that mean in terms of people even knowing that you're nearby? But will there be standards? How will things move through the political sector that will either constrain the kinds of exciting work you're doing or facilitate it, and certainly bring products out into the marketplace faster? We're also looking at the university and in our state and our country for the <coughs> development of green careers, which to me is incredibly exciting. When I look at What's happened just since, well, I think just a few years ago. It's amazing. When I think back to the last big energy conference that the Energy Center put on, I was absolutely dazzled by the array of green businesses coming up just in our area and developing. Clearly, uh, now you may view me as slightly prejudiced, since I feel like these days I'm the marketing agent for chemistry, but I believe chemistry is a foundation science. And one of the reasons I was really eager to welcome you today is because we recognize that chemistry is critical to work on energy generation and our energy independence from fossil fuels. Um, also, to the improvement of storage systems, which you saw if you looked at our graduate student work with Brett Lux 
uh, lab. R&D, however, we're discovering, just as the interest in what you're doing is interdisciplinary, the R&D must be interdisciplinary too. I am so proud of the work that people are doing in our URI Energy Center and the partnerships that have emerged. But one of the things we saw in our last energy conference, we're seeing in our research today, and we're seeing in this conference today, is that besides just the Energy Center group, we're seeing colleges throughout Rhode Island and our business partners joining in, and our government agency partners, who are not only funded into basic research, but who help make that transition between the basic discoveries up to the level where business investment in R&D can take over. So I think in order to, to move this along, this kind of collaboration is essential. And that leads me to um, some of the exciting work that I think is really quite dazzling, and you saw, again, some of it. The longer lasting batteries for electric vehicles, the work that uh, some of our oceanographers and others talk about the intervention of politics and economics, offshore renewable energy, biofuels, creating, uh, in every single case, experiential learning for our students. Our students don't want to work on just theoretical problems anymore. <coughs> Whoops, what did I do? <laughs> they want to work on real life problems. And one thing President Dooley has been saying, who is a chemist, by the way, is he wants us to bring our students into the marketplace, to work with you as partners, to bring our faculty uh, probably from all of our universities closer together to the businesses so we can move this agenda forward. Now that leads me to the main reason. I was particularly eager, you notice my accessory here. Um, we need your help. How many of you are Rhode Island voters? Oh good. And hopefully the rest of you know Rhode Island voters. <laughs> uh, you may have noticed our propaganda table. That's, this is where my marketing agent for chemistry comes along. We are hoping to get Question number two passed on election day, where it will create our new center for chemical and forensic sciences. If you've seen our exquisite center for biotechnology and life sciences, uh, you know what a modern science building should look like. Pastore, which was built in 1953, was designed with pre-World War II science for a world that uh, educated 800 students. We now have over 6,000 who must take chemistry. And we're the humongous bottleneck for health science, life <laughs> science, biotechnology, engineering, um, and more careers because we can't get the labs when they need them. So the important things to remember is this is going to double and more our teaching and laboratory capacity, which means our, our workforce of the future can get the labs when they need them, not wait and wait to get access and increasing their college education costs. It's also going to expand our research space that allows us to do even more exciting work with you. It'll create 900 jobs in construction right off the bat, and the whole bond issue will create 1,200 because it'll also expand up an art center at Rhode Island College that was never designed for artists, so it'll actually retrofit it for, for art. It also meet lead standards because we're trying at the university to be as sustainable as we can. And for those of you who follow Jimmy Oxley's work, it's going to house our Department of Homeland Security, Center for Excellence in Explosive Detection, Mitigation, and Response. And it's going to be sited near other key players in the sciences, pharmacy, CDLS, nursing, and engineering, so that we can make it as easy as possible for people to work together. The more we've looked at chemistry in Rhode Island, the more we've discovered that there are a lot of jobs in the chemical industry which are absolutely critical. And we support a lot more jobs for people who must have chemistry. So this is an investment in the Rhode Island economy. Therefore, as your favorite marketing agent, <laughs> I'm asking you to please uh, help us in this endeavor, which will not only help our students and our workforce in the future, but it'll help us partner with you more effectively in modern science in an appropriate facility that will support that. So thank you very much. You're doing the right thing at this time. That's it.